Hi, and welcome to the Chapter 22 podcast. This is on the respiratory system. And the respiratory system, you can think of as like your lungs, but more importantly, it's how we get oxygen into our blood supply and get rid of carbon dioxide. Um, the picture I wanted to start with here is a climber on Mount Everest. Uh, Mount Everest is so high that the amount of oxygen there is in the atmosphere drops really low. So if you were to somehow transport me right now to the top of Mount Everest, I would instantly pass out. And so climbers who climb Mount Everest have to move up the mountain and down and move up, and that allows their body to acclimatize for that. Now athletes have figured out this process as well. And so this is Levi Leipheimer. Uh, he's from Montana, just like myself. Uh, and, and what he's, I think, finished third in the Tour de France. So a very good bike racer. Um, but what he sleeps in, or I've read that he sleeps in, is something called an altitude tent. And so what an altitude tent does, it allows you to sleep at about 9,000 feet of elevation. And so your body starts to acclimatize to that. What do you do? You actually produce more hemoglobin and your red blood cells get bigger. And so now when you start to race, you can carry more oxygen and so you can go faster. Um, the cool thing about an altitude tent is that you can wake up and then you can train at sea level at a really high intensity. Um, and so what is this chapter about? It's simply about moving oxygen in and moving carbon dioxide out. So we, before we get to the human respiratory system, let's talk a little bit about how it's found in other animals. And so there are two things that are required for any respiratory surface. And the first one is it has to be wet. And the reason why is oxygen is moving in and carbon dioxide is moving out simply through a process called diffusion. And so if it was dry, that's simply not going to work. Second thing that you need is an increase in the surface area. And so one of the simpler forms is just using your skin as a respiratory device. And so amphibians will do this, but same thing here with this worm. And so what they're using is their skin as a surface, and so the capillaries will run right next to that, or the vessels will, and so oxygen will simply move from an area of high concentration outside the worm to an area of low concentration inside. If you get to an insect, they've got a little different system. What they've got is they've increased the surface area on the inside and so they have tiny little holes called spiracles along the side of them and so what happens is air moves in and it actually branches through these tiny microscopic tubes until each of those tubes eventually plums or goes to one individual cell. And some of the bigger insects will have to move their body in and out. Sometimes they use that during flight to actually pump that air in and out, kind of like an accordion. Next we've got the arrival of gills and gills are found in animals that live in water. And so fish is an example of a gill and we'll talk more about that in a second but what you try to do with a gill is you increase surface area and then we also want to have water Water rushing over the surface of that. And so there's as much surface area in the gills of a fish as there is throughout the whole rest of their body. As we move on to land, we get actually more oxygen, but we lose that wet um, environment that we need to move it in. And so we move that wet surface inside our body. And so lungs are folded inside our body to keep it moist and also increase surface area. Um, but they have that similar role. It's moving oxygen in. Uh, I want to talk about two of these things. First, let's talk about gills. And gills um, are have high amounts of blood vessels found within it, but they also utilize something called the countercurrent gas exchange. And so if you're a fish, what you do is you move your operculum in and out like that, and as you move it in and out, and you move your mouth like that, you're actually drawing water in and over those gills. Um, as you do that, the blood will actually flow in this direction and the water will flow in the other direction. And so in science we call that a countercurrent gas exchanger. What does that mean? The water is going from an area of really low oxygen concentration and it's hitting water that has a slightly higher amount of oxygen concentration. And so we're loading up that water so you can see here that when the blood now has 60% of the oxygen, it's actually meeting more uh, water that's more rich in oxygen. And so the cool thing about that is we can utilize up to 80% of the water, or excuse me, 80% of the oxygen that comes in is going to actually end up in that blood supply. And compared to those gills, we're really, really inefficient. Um, but the nice thing is that when you move on to land, there's way more oxygen.